Hey folks, uh, I've got uh, two more examples for you of conservation of energy problems uh, that don't involve non-conservative forces. Uh, the first example um, I've drawn there for you, uh, if you want to pause the video for a moment and copy that down, uh, we got a two cart system or two block system moving. Uh, the, the block on the table is on wheels, so there's no friction. Uh, and it's already moving, there's a V naught. And so M2 is also moving at V naught downward. Uh, so what we're going to determine is in terms of the givens and fundamental constants, what is the velocity of both blocks when M2 has dropped the distance H? Okay, so that's our goal is to find that VF. So um, we're definitely going to use conservation of energy here. And what would make the most sense is to call the spot where we're starting point A and the spot where we're ending point B. There's nothing in between that we have to worry about. And uh, there are non-conservative forces acting, but they're not doing any work. So for instance, tension is acting. Tension points that way. It's adding energy to cart one. But at the same time, that same tension force is removing energy from M2 down there. And those tensions are equal, and they're acting through an equal distance. And one's a plus and one's a negative, so they cancel. There's also a normal force acting on cart one, but it's perpendicular to motion, so it's not doing any work. So the only forces doing work here are conservative, aka gravity. Um, so that's going to be in our potential energy term. Uh, so our, our conservation of energy equation is uh, K naught plus U naught plus work non-conservative equals K final plus U final. Okay. Now, um, if you look at the top cart, M1, it never changes height. So I am going to ignore the MGH term for cart one. Um, or another way to look at this is I'm going to call this H equals zero for cart one. For cart two, now that does matter. I'll call this H equals zero for cart two. And you're allowed to do that. If you have multiple masses, you can have each one have its own zero height. All right, so um, at the beginning, they're at point A, both carts are moving, so there's going to be two K knots. Um, cart two does have a height, so there's going to be a potential energy. Uh, there's no non-conservative work. We just talked about that. There is going to be a final kinetic energy. Both things are moving at, at point B. Um, and both objects are at their, their respective zero heights at point B, so there's not going to be a potential energy final. So kinetic energy naught is one half. Now, I'm going to combine the masses and say this is M1 plus M2. Both are moving at the same velocity, so I can combine the masses. And this would be V naught squared plus, now only M2 is at a height. So we got an M2 GH. And at point B, um, they both are moving together again. They have the same velocity, but now that's what we're trying to solve for. That's our V final. And then basically, oh, we got to square that. And um, basically, we're just doing algebra and solve for V final. <laughs> so it's not much to it there. Uh, let's see if we can do this in one step. It's going to be a big old square root. You're going to have a one half M1 plus M2 V naught squared plus MGH all over one half M1 plus M2. And if you were really fancy, you would multiply the top and bottom of that fraction by two. So that half would be gone. You'd have a two there, and that half would be gone. Uh, that's equivalent. That'd probably be one of the simplest ways to write it. So there's example one um, and a couple lines of work. The hard part is defining your zero heights and all that. Uh, the actual math isn't so bad. Uh, now, the second example I've got for you um, also is not very long. There's also some review in this example. So let's say you're in charge of designing a roller coaster that starts from roughly rest and goes down a big, huge first hill and then goes through a loop-de-loop. -loop. And let's just, for the sake of argument, say the loop-de-loop -loop has a radius r and it's circular. The initial starting height of the roller coaster is h. Here's our roller coaster, starting with a v naught of roughly zero. It's just barely starting over the edge. And here's what we're going to figure out in this problem. We're going to figure out, um, there, are, there are different positions that we got here. We got a point A, that's when we're releasing the roller coaster. We got a point B, that's when it's at the very bottom of its, of its movement. And we got a point C, 
at the top of the loop. So what I want to do is I want to know at point B, what's the min velocity at point B so that the roller coaster will actually make it over the loop without the occupants falling out. So it's pretend they're not wearing their seatbelts. All right. And then I also would like to find um, the min velocity at point C. What is that velocity at point C such that they don't fall out? They have to be moving in order to not fall out of their seat. Okay. And then finally, uh, what's the min height that I have to release my roller coaster at so that they, they, the occupants actually make it through the loop without falling out? Now, I'm going to actually probably do things in this order. I'll probably find the min velocity at C first, the top of the loop, and then at B, and then we'll find the min height. Okay. All right, so we got three points. Um, there is a non-conservative force acting here, and that's the normal force. But at all points in the motion, the normal force is perpendicular to the motion, so it's not doing any work in this case. We're going to uh, neglect friction for now. We're going to assume that is not enough to worry about. All right, so um, I will start with point C, okay? Well, actually, we'll, we'll do this. Um, well, okay, we'll start at point C. What's the min velocity of somebody at point C so that they actually stay in the circle? Well, it turns out that's not an energy question. That's a, a dynamics question. That's a net force equals MA question. Let's say you are a passenger up there and you are upside down and um, you are uh, doing the loop. What forces act on us? Well, we got the force of gravity and we're also going to have the seat pushing down on us. That's our normal force. Okay. This is your circle. Inward is positive. And if we do net force equals MA, uh, you're going to have FN plus FG equals M V squared over R. Okay. Now, we don't know FN. However, when you're traveling at the minimum velocity, FN shrinks to zero. In other words, you're just making it over and if you imagine you're just making it around that loop without falling out, the seat starts to basically not press on you. It's like you're, you almost feel weightless for that brief moment of time. So if you're at the min velocity there, then you set Fn equal to zero. Well, then you just have Fg, which is mg, equals mv squared over r. The m's drop out, and you get v min. The v min at point C has to be root gr, okay? Now, okay, so we've actually found the min velocity at point C. Okay, now the next step is to find, you could either do the height at point A or you can do the min velocity at point B. I'll start, I'll do the min velocity at point B. So here we're going to go from B to C. Okay, um, we're going to assume that the height is zero at the bottom of the hill. Okay, now you can pick anywhere, but that's a convenient spot. So going from B to C, at point B, there's only kinetic energy. There's no potential energy because your height is zero. At point C, there's still kinetic energy because we're moving. We just found that velocity. And there's also gravitational potential energy because now you're at a height. Okay. Uh, we got one half mvb squared equals one half mvc squared plus mg. And then what's the height of the roller coaster at point C from the ground? Well, it's the diameter of the circle, which is 2R. Now, if you look at the equation, all the M's drop out, okay? And you end up with uh, 1 half V squared, VB squared, equals 1 half, now, VC squared. Well, VC is root GR, so VC squared would be GR. And then over here, we have a 2 gr okay now um we got that uh now i am going to uh basically combine those two grs uh so we got a, a now we're just doing algebra so one half vb squared equals two and a half which is five halves gr and then i can divide or multiply both sides by two and that goes away so vb minimum has to be root five gr now, again, this is all assuming that there's no friction, okay? So that's VB. Now, to find the min height, you can either go from A to B or A to C. It doesn't matter, okay? I'll pick A to B. So if I'm going from A 
to B. At point A, where we basically set our velocity zero, so we're not moving, but we do have a height, so we're going to have a potential energy at B, at, at, or at A, sorry. And at point B, we only have kinetic energy. There's no, there's no height there, so we got a kinetic energy at B. So this is actually pretty easy. We got mgh equals one half m b at b squared. Uh, the m's drop out. You get a gh equals one half, and vb is root five gr, so vb squared is five gr. Now check this out. Gravity cancels out, and you get h equals five halves the radius, or two and a half times the radius. Now the cool part about that result is Gravity doesn't matter, so this, the same the roller coaster would work the same on the Earth as it would on the Moon or Mars or somewhere else. The speeds would be di different, um, but the minimum height to start your roller coaster at would be identical. So again, that's why we like doing problems without numbers. Sometimes you may not you may not see that result. You may not see the G's canceling um, if you uh, if you started putting numbers in this right away. So I hope that was helpful, and uh, see you on the next next one.